What is you doing? Well, oh, hey. Well, today I'm gonna record some voice uh, roles for two projects. Uh, one is some cat voices for a video game. Uh, I forget what the video game's called. You and Rich always do cat voices for things. I know. <laughs> Neither of you like cats. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just a weird coincidence. <laughs> okay, so you saw it through our phony trick, but we're mugging you anyway. Hand over your wallet, you fudge eater. Meow. Meow. And then I'm also playing a character in uh, an episode of Cyanide and Happiness cartoon show. I'll be recording these voices in the uh, official Red Letter Media recording booth built by Sir Rich Evans. It has a plexiglass window to look out of so you don't feel like you're in a coffin. The motion activated light turns on. What is this, the future? Uh, yeah. We're, uh, so you don't have to even flip a switch, and there's built a built-in power supply right here. There's a microphone stand, and these 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 new mics, by the way, Jay, are great. So there's a little shelf here for everything, and then uh, I suppose this is sort of oddly designed because it's uh, two people could fit this way. Yeah. So I guess you can you can kind of maybe move the mic a little, and. Uh, and, and two people can be into this booth. It'd be rare we would need to record like that anyway. It, it would be, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm doing today. It's a Monday, it's in the middle of the day. I, I have nothing else to work on, so I'm doing some voiceover roles to fill the lonely, lonely hours of my day. What does a cat purr sound like? Oh, I can't do a cat purr. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, kind of like that. that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I want any of those filthy animals. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are in the famous, world famous Red Letter Media Lounge. We've had this Hollywood Cop poster for a long time, but it used to be kind of in the best of the worst screening room. We moved it down here. Wow, someone sent us this. Jason and Justine Bateman and How Can I Tell If I'm Really In Love. How can I How tell, can I tell if, I'm if I'm really, really in, love? in love? One day you'll meet someone and you'll feel a different feeling. And then this beautiful painting of Cameron Mitchell and a tiny dog. But then we noticed something after these were framed. They were not framed by me and they were not framed by Mike. But there's a plastic protective covering. Yeah, who, who would do this? Who would just not take off the protective covering? It's not like there was a, 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 a rip that was started. I looked up and noticed with my keen eye <laughs> that the colors looked a little uh, desaturated or less vibrant than they should be. Yes. Someone framed this poster with the protective plastic coating still on the plexiglass and I thought, who in their right mind would do such a thing or be so incredibly obtuse? Why is this a two-person job? Because there's two fucking Oh posters. my god, so, okay. This is the guy who hung up the posters with the plastic still on them. Excuse me. Oh my god. Why are we doing this at the same time? How can you tell if you're really in love? I don't know, but I definitely know what hate feels like. Hanging up posters is so nice, we done it twice. We did a video, was that last year? Where we explained that we found old Dick the Birthday Boy photos from the famous Dick the Birthday Boy birthday. And then shortly after that, we had our friend Freddie Williams come into the town and while he was here, we showed him the mysterious Dick the Birthday Boy uh, extended family photos. I can't believe this. <laughs> it's like when they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls. And we said, you can't take a photo of this. You can't, you can't do anything with this. This will never make its way onto the internet. And then when he got home, he sketched the photos by memory. <laughs> 
I, I will neither confirm nor deny how accurate they are to the actual photos. What? What? I was gonna wait until you put the whole thing back together before you realize that it has two sides. I, I'm almost sure I did at least one of the sides. I don't know. Oh my God. This is why daddy's in charge. Look at what you did to the poster though. <laughs> 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 oh my. Watch out, don't knock over your, your. Huh? Oh, oh no. Oh. You got it? Yeah. Good job, Rich. So yeah, we just, we just keep filling the walls with framed things. These are the original, uh, we did a video a few years ago, also with Freddie Williams, about a fake movie called Horse Ninja. These are Rich's original drawings for the Horse Ninja comic book. And then above that, we have a premiere trade screening ad for Nuki. Yeah, we're going to be hanging more stuff today. I, uh, we're close to running out of room. Uh, we have a, a here, a, a lens movie, Pact of Vengeance. Signed by the late Leo Fong. Yes, yeah, signed by the late Leo Fong. Hey, we'll get the sandwich. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. The frame does not have hard work to hang it. And I am a lazy son of a bitch who has never gotten hardware uh, to hang it. Do you need a, like a ruler? Oh, you can use the tape measure. Yeah. Here, I can do it. I'm more dexterous. <laughs> oh, you know what? Can I, we gotta get some kind of... Okay. Oh! I just broke it. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Poster is in pristine condition. So is the frame. Oh, another job successfully completed. Well, guys, here are two bins of all 50, 90, 100, 400, how many tapes? 100 100 and something, 115, it was 100 like 103 or something. Yeah, 104. weird. Yeah, all the I don't tapes. even remember anymore. Uh, 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 been chopped up. It's it's a lot of <laughs> lot of actual videotape, but a lot of pieces of plastic, hard black plastic, and shreds of the tape itself. Lord Jesus, help me. And and you wanted to save it all. Strangely. Well, yeah. Well, well, yeah, of course. It's the next phase of our, the Nuki chapter. Um, <laughs> no one's talking, really what, gone. <laughs> well, what, 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 what are we going to do with it? I wanted to create some kind of like... The garbage dump? <laughs> no, we're going to create some kind of... Some sort of piece of art. Work or of something. art. I, I had thought, because we have that giant uh, VHS tape. I was thinking, make a mold of it. And then... Th Mix that with like, like epoxy resin or something, like mix some epoxy with that mixed into it, and then pour that into the mold. We could do that. That that was my thought. Well, should it be like the final result be like a large, hardened black VHS tape? We're making a silicone mold of this giant VHS tape, which I don't remember where, I think I got this on like Etsy or something. We were gonna incorporate it on the best of the worst set. And I think we did for like one episode and that was it. Oh yeah. If it's a thin layer covering the whole thing, yeah. I can reinforce it with plaster too. It's like a big sheet cake. But the question is, how do we See, melt that's the thing it all is, down? How do, we, talk okay, about that. how do we melt it all down without getting cancer? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm tabling the resin idea for right now. How mm. do we liquefy it without burning? Uh, you, I don't think you do. I, yeah, I have no what idea. What about... Acetone. 
We, I, I think we would have to do an experiment because acetone, the, when we did the Star Wars toys in acetone. Oh yeah, it melts like certain things. Yes, the, the legs and the heads of the figures were different. No, no, I'm sorry. The chest. It was like a harder plastic. The chest was, like was a... a weaker plastic. Oh, is that what melted? Yes. The legs, oh, okay. the legs were a different kind of plastic and the, the chest or the torso was, was a different. The torso is what melted and the legs took longer to melt. So what was left in the in the mass of Star Wars toys was lots of legs and heads. Well, what That's is right. the, what is the, the tape made out of? Is that that is that it's, is that a plastic with that melt in? It's a plastic with magnetic metal elements <laughs> on it, I think. Yeah, the question is, I guess we would have to do a test of dropping some of that NASA and seeing what happens. Yeah. All right, this is attempt number two, our first one. We did the mold, it came out kind of thin because we ran out of uh, silicone. So the mold was a little thin and we mixed in with the epoxy, uh, we burnt some of the tapes and we mixed in the ashes, which just turned the whole thing black, which makes it look more like an actual VHS tape, but it's not as visually appealing. And it got warped because the mold was so thin that it warped. So this is our second mold, uh, thicker, silicone mold. just got a shipment from Prop Store from the most recent auction and I'm very excited to open it. I'm just excited because this is the first really valuable thing we've got. It's Ellen Ripley's gun from Aliens. Right. We, we spent our entire savings on yeah. it. The, the hero flamethrower from Aliens. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it cost us $49,000 and let's open this puppy up and see what we got. <laughs> These packing peanuts were used in the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks. They were in some of the FedEx packages that washed ashore on the island. Can't wait to look at Ellen Ripley's gun from Aliens. The fuck? Oh my god! Oh! Oh boy! Oh, oh my God! Oh, that's fucking coming off! <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Help me! Oh, it's my baby bank! Oh no! It's another baby bank! We got him two baby banks. They sent us the wrong thing. Oh! 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 Just let me die! Just let me die! They didn't disclose that his fucking neck was separated. <laughs> Baby Bink. Let's see what else we got in the box. <laughs> Maybe this is Ellen Ripley's gun. Oh my god, it's oh, this is the gun. This is this is Ellen Ripley's gun. What the fuck? Oh my god. Oh my god, it's another baby bank. Oh, what in the this was apparently jaundice. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm guessing this is a crawling baby bink. Look at the little legs. That's great. Look at that. That's the little legs. I'm baby bink! Whoa! Oh, this is a quality prop right here. Look at that. Extra, extra! Man, the plane! Extra, extra! Read all about it! 
Now this was, is one of the newspapers from the Rocketeer. Uh, I don't know if it's the hero one that uh, somebody picked up and looked at, or it could be the hero one, who knows? I'm wondering what all the little articles are. Oh yeah, look at this. A few thousand more United States Marines landed in South Vietnam today. Oh. Uh, military spokesman, President Johnson. So yeah, this chunk of text is from a different newspaper. And then this is just, yeah, interesting. So our next task that we've been meaning to work on for a while now is to fix our ailing gremlin. They have been mounted, they came this way, mounted on these wooden stakes um, that just have, uh, here, here's his, if, you, if you'll see, it's just this. And uh, over time, the weight from his torso and body have been pulling on his neck slowly over time separating his head from his neck. And I've seen pictures of other gremlins, from gremlins too, that this has happened to. Yeah. It's just, it's just foam latex. And they were designed to work for, you know, a couple of weeks of shooting over 30 years ago. Made of foam latex, which over time just dries out and kind of shrinks a little and becomes brittle. The paint uh, also becomes brittle and starts flaking off, so. We, we've spent our day Proving, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that we are completely incompetent. Oh! I just broke it. And now, after, you know, ruining our fixing jobs, we're going to try to repair a priceless movie prop from one of your all-time favorite movies. We're gonna do our best. Huh? Ah! Oh. How much experience do you have res restoring uh, movie props? How, how long have you been into prop restoration? What time is it? Okay, here we go. At, at this point, I'm not gonna be surprised if Mike is bringing it back into the wood chipper. Wish you in front of me so I don't trip. I don't know why I'm walking backwards specifically, but... Okay, can Follow I... Follow my voice, you're gonna run into... Like, I'm gonna equipment. turn around now. I yeah. Think, I think it's safe for you to walk forward. Okay, I'm gonna walk forward. I'm walking backwards this whole time. I'm gonna walk forward now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you wanna follow me that way, Jay? Okay. I, we're carefully walking back to the operating table now, in the silliest way possible. I, I would imagine that everyone at, at home watching this video is going to expect me to trip and fall and land on this gremlin, utterly destroying it. I would not be shocked at this point. <sighs> oh! Okay. All right. Let's see. Now this way, I see the head being pulled at the neck, right in the middle. Okay, so we gotta act quickly. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why can't we act slowly? The head is being pulled that back that way. What do you think we should do? Like the Star Trek big monster head? Yeah. Uh, there's a pole and then there's a big ball. I, I was thinking the big, like a foam ball. That'll just rip the head off. You need the ball, you need the, the support to be in his chest with also a secondary support holding the head up. So you need like a big ball in the chest with a separate thing coming out holding the head in place. This this pole this pole isn't even gone through. 
Oh, there it goes. This is this. Yeah. Is that's the problem. That's see, that's what it's doing. It's pushing yeah. up into that. We needed to stop at the body. Yeah. I may have found the solution. Just me doing this with my hand. The problem now is because this is completely ripped apart. If it stays where it is now, that head is just going to start falling forward, and it's going to rip off that way. Like, like, like this. Now yes. to yeah. hold. Yeah. In an ideal world, yes, but getting that inside there would destroy. It. Look, it's look at, space. look at what I'm doing with my hand. What are you thinking? Uh, thinking we just build a, we build a new frame. Like here, just take, take, take them okay. down. We don't need them up there. Well, I'm trying to mark, mark the spot where my hand. Like roughly here. Yeah. So. Well, not roughly. We have a, th a thicker base that's here with a pole coming out of it to go through it. So we just build a, build a, something this tall that's yeah. fat. Okay. And then we'll mount something else in it. You could do four pieces of. Um, yeah. Two by four. Boom, 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 and yeah. I have an idea. What? It's so crazy. It just might work. Okay. Throw it in the trash. I think the best solution is to lay, like you've had him laid down, we just keep him laid down in something. We'll have a little gremlin coffin? A yeah, glass? Yeah, like a little gremlin oh, coffin. Oh, 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 we can make him a goddamn coffee table. What? We can make it into a coffee table. Put him inside. We like put him inside with a plexiglass top. thing on top. <laughs> what are you, Ed Gein? <laughs> Damn. I like it. So update, Rich is suggesting we embed the gremlin inside of a coffee table. I think he's looking for an example. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, so the idea then, obviously, he would be face up. I'm trying to see. He, he, he would, we would have to put a little something, something right here. Something like this. Yeah. So what do you have to buy a, ta a glass coffee table? I mean, we we've basically. I think that's. I think that's the best solution. Okay. That could be the best of the worst screening room coffee table. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've, added, we've added two uh, v videotapes behind his head, and it seems to be the perfect height because his head was pulling back if you just let it be, and then his neck was splitting in the middle. So two VHS tape height of something soft, foam uh -huh. or something. Um, or or we're two gonna, VHS tapes. Two VHS tapes, although they are kind of hard, but oh well. We're going to get Gremlins 1 and Gremlins 2 on VHS and put them under his head. But so the idea then is to get a coffee table that that big that tall certain dimensions that's glass top um preferably black underneath um so we don't see all the flakes that will sure. in, invariably uh inevitably fall off him and also we could also if we get other prop tchotchkes yep. put them all around yeah. him yeah, yeah, yeah so um yeah we uh i think standing him upright is out of the question yeah we could surround him with like gremlins Merchandise or prop, even props or yeah, we have like the little gremlin ball and those yeah, other arms. Yeah. Anything gremlins goes in the gremlin coffee table. If you order it, have to order it online. Do that. Uh -huh. You know, I'm happy about the solution. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I loved having the three gremlins on their stands. It looks so nice. But you'll have I, to get another sturdier gremlin, Mike. I know. I we'll think that's the only one. solution. Or some other thing uh, to put on a stand next to the gremlin. But I'm okay with him lying in. And a, gla and a glass coffee table because uh, it, it will preserve him longer. 